So here's another room in my home that has more action figures and die cast in it, and I call this room Showroom B. Okay, so let's now take a look at this room. And a lot more stuff to see in this room here. I call this room Showroom B. Uh, like it pretty much picks up from sh where Showroom A left off. It's action figures and it's die cast, and it's pretty much all the action figures and die cast that I acquired from my collection from roughly the years 2012, 2013, all the way until 2019. So now let's take a look at this room here. So here's another room in my home that I call Showroom B. Uh, its contents are similar to that of Showroom A. It's action figures and die cast, and it pretty much picks up where Showroom A leaves off. Uh, this uh, room has all my collectibles in it that I acquired uh, from about the year 2013 all the way to present day 2019. And I like to take you through it the same way I took you through Showroom A. We'll start with the action figures and then take a look at the die cast. So we'll begin by taking a look at the sports figures in this display, more specifically the football figures. Now these football figures are waves 32, 33, and 34 of the McFarland Sports Pick Football Waves, which came out back in 2012 through 2014. And here you're seeing all the big names of the game from that time. Just to share a little side story, uh, some years ago I had a poker game. And as I was waiting for my, my buddies to show up for the game, one of my friends was in here. I don't remember who it was. And he was checking out my, my sports picks and this, this display that you're seeing here. And he said to me, so hey man, um... You don't collect defensive players? Because I don't see too many def defensive players up on your wall here. I see mostly just a lot of offensive players. And I said to him, oh, no, I absolutely do collect the defensive players. Um, but the truth is, Tom McFarlane, traditionally speaking, has never included very many defensive players in his lines. And as you can see here, most of the players in these uh, waves of football are offensive, uh, with a particular heavy emphasis on quarterbacks. Because the truth of the matter is, Quarterbacks do drive the football hobby. If you look at the uh, football card market, the four hottest selling players in football cards right now are Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and Joe Burrow. All four quarterbacks. Uh, so yeah, I do collect this, uh, the defensive players. You saw there uh, J.J. Watt and Ray Lewis. Um, but there's just not very many of them out there to collect. And yeah, I do wish Tom McFarland would have made more defensive players in his lines. More football figures in this display here. These are from 2015 and 2016. One initial observation is the change in packaging, how we switch from a square clamshell to a longer, more rectangular one. And more on that in just a little bit. And now I'll take a look at those figures up close. Uh, getting back to this issue of player selection, there has been a sentiment over the years in the hobby for Echo by collectors, myself included, where I wish that Todd would have done a better job with player selection in his football lines, uh, specifically regard to position on the field. Uh, most every one of his lines of figures is quarterback heavy, like I said, with some wide receivers and running backs in there. Uh, very few, if any, defensive players to speak of. And in the almost 20 years Todd's been producing these figures, there's only been a small, and I do mean a very small handful, of kickers and offensive guards and linemen um, but again, there are other positions in the field besides quarterback. And would have just liked, many of us would have just like to see those different players featured in the lines of sports picks. Now, for example, here we're coming up on a couple figures here of Johnny Manziel. And you see the regular figure on the left in the dark brown and the chase figure in the white jersey on the right. And I know Johnny Manziel was very hyped coming out of college, Heisman Trophy winner, Johnny football and all. But I just prefer to see a Terrell Suggs figure in place of Manziel in this wave 
because Suggs is a future Hall of Famer and one of the all-time greats. And then speaking of future Hall of Famers, here's one, Darrell Rivas, future Hall of Fame defensive back, reg figure on the left, chase figure on the right. Um, again, I would have liked to see more figures like this, more defensive backs, like Patrick Peterson, uh, Earl Thomas, Eric Berry perhaps. Um, if Todd McFarlane would have ever made a three-pack collector's box of the Legion of Boom, Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas, uh, Richard Sherman, I'd have definitely added to my collection in a heartbeat. Oh, take a look at the basketball figures on this display. There's a Reagan Chase, Reagan Chase Steph Curry, and I think I have JB to thank for that yellow jersey chase. And Reagan Chase Anthony Davis. couple of LeBron James figures. Here's one for the Collector's Club exclusive where he's packaged up with his MVP and World Championship trophies. And Derrick Rose, Regan Chase, the white jersey chase where Rose has his MVP trophy. And continue on with the big names of 2013-2014. You see there Carmelo Anthony. Another Kobe Bryant figure. Regan Chase, James Harden. Damian Lillard, Joaquim Noah, and Tony Parker. You'll observe in the Parker and Noah figures, you see an upper torso in the package, but you don't see legs. The legs are, in fact, in there. They're just not attached to the torso. As you can see on the Noah figure there, it says leg assembly required above his name. And so I'm going to come into the bottom of the package here and show you. The legs are, in fact, in there, but they're lying flat in the bottom of the package in a little twist tie. And for many years, Todd McFarland did his basketball figures this way, where he would package them up in the square clamshell packaging, but would not have them fully assembled with the legs. Fast forward now to 2015, and you can see how the packaging changes. We saw this on the football figures. It goes from a square clamshell packaging to a longer rectangular package, uh, thereby allowing the figure to be fully assembled. Uh, these four figures from NBA Series 25 are all fully assembled. The Dwight Howard, the Reagan Chase, Andre Drummond, and the Michael Carter Williams, again, all have legs intact and fully assembled because the rectangular packaging is allowing for that. Here's four more. Uh, regular Chase Paul George. That white jersey Kevin Durant with the MVP trophy was a GameStop exclusive. And you got a Reagan Chase Kawhi Leonard with a NBA championship trophy. LeBron James again, and the Birdman, Chris Anderson. And up here you got Andrew Wiggins, Chase Blake Griffin, and Regan Chase, Jabari Parker. And the basketball figures continue on this display. These are from 2016, 2017, and many of these players are no longer with their respective teams because, well, these days, NBA, cha NBA players change teams quite frequently. And we'll start here in the upper right corner. There's a Reg and Chase Russell Westbrook, the Reg figure in the third OKC red jersey, and the Chase figure in the dark blue. I think that one's compliments to JB. Here's a Reg and Chase Chris Porzingis, who's now with the Dallas Mavericks. There's a Chase Kyrie Irving, again from JB, I think. Kevin Love, Reagan Chase figure. He's about the only household name left in the Cavaliers roster. Former Defensive Player of the Year, Mark Azal. Kind of a cool-looking Chris Paul and Chase figure in the NBA All-Star jersey. Clay Thompson, Reagan Chase. And the Marcus Aldridge, Regan Chase figure. And Jimmy Butler, who's now with the Miami Heat. Regan Chase. This is a Clark Toys exclusive Steph Curry in the Gold City jersey. Down here is Mark's brother Paul Gasol, formerly the Chicago Bulls. Anthony Davis Chase figure. Thank you, Carm. And the Regan Chase Eric Bledsoe. Now, I believe, with the Milwaukee Bucks. The basketball finishes up on this display here. These figures are from 2017-2018.
Here's Derrick Rose and Ben Simmons with Rose features in New York Nick. There's only one of each there because no Chase version of either figure was produced. Uh, McFarland didn't always produce a Chase figure of every player, sometimes just a regular. Here's a Regan Chase Dwayne Wade features the Chicago Bull. Gray jersey Andre Drummond Chase figure. Draymond Green, only one of him because there was no Chase figure produced. A red jersey James Harden Chase. Here's a cool look on LeBron James in a wine-colored Cavalier jersey. And Kawhi Leonard in a third Spurs jersey. Damian Lillard, Regan Chase figure. Brandon Ingram. And a red Kevin Durant. A couple nice figures here. Here's a Tim Duncan and a Kobe Bryant collector's edition figures issued in special collector's boxes. Uh, both were available through Clark Toys online store, I believe. And just to show you the Duncan here, he comes packaged up with his NBA trophies and MVP awards. And Kobe Bryant here in the purple jersey. Kobe's part of an exclusive Kobe wave. I think it was six or seven or maybe eight figures of Kobe Bryant in the wave. Uh, serial number in the base to 2000 of that piece produced. And I believe also the Tim Duncan's number in the base. So just some very cool looking special edition box figures there. There's Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, DeAndre Jordan, who's now with the Brooklyn Nets. And Paul George again. And to show you this Paul George figure is particularly cool. If you can see inside the package there, he's wearing the Hickory jersey. Uh, paying homage to the great sports film Hoosiers. Now for some baseball figures. There's a Yasel Puig chase figure, uh, bronze level, I believe. And Puig has the oversized head there. Yadier Molina is one and only figure in the line. Here's a Reagan chase Manny Machado. Now this figure of Ricky Henderson is particularly cool because as you can see, he's packaged up here with nine different baseball caps representing the nine teams he played with in his Hall of Fame career. Regan Chase, a world as Chapman. And there's a Chase, Miguel Cabrera with a silver bat after he won the MVP and the Triple Crown that year. Two more baseball figures here. And again, you see the change in packaging from square to rectangular. So these are a little bit later, 2016, I believe, or so. Uh, you got Mike Trout, uh, Gene Carlos Stanton, Anthony Rizzo, all regular figures. Billy Hamilton. There's a reg and a Chase Robertson Cano. A reg and Chase Jose Abreu with the Chase being the, the throwback. 1983 White Sox jersey. Kind of cool. And there's Masahiro Tanaka. And a Matt Harvey Collector's Club exclusive figure. More baseball figures on top of this bookcase display in the room with just a couple of basketball figures mixed in there. Uh, none of these figures were produced by McFarlane or Sports Picks. Uh, these are sports figures produced by other companies uh, in the late 90s and maybe around the year 2000. Starting from left here, this is a headliner XL of Sammy Sosa produced by a company called Corinthian. And Corinthian came around in the late 90s and produced figures that looked like this. Kind of vaguely resembles a bobblehead. But Corinthian didn't last too long and therefore didn't make too many waves of figures. Here's a Derek Jeter Omar Vizquel 2-pack. This was produced by the Hasbro Company. And you see there it's a starting lineup too. Uh, incidentally, it was one of the last sports figure waves that Hasbro produced back in the year 2000 before Hasbro gave up their sports license and McFarland picked it up. And here's another Headliners XL 2-pack. 
It's a Ken Griffey Jr. Mark McGuire for the home run derby. This one is Mike Piazza, Derek Jeter. Headliners XL2 back by Corinthian. Back to starting lineup. Ken Griffey Jr., Andrew Jones, two-pack. On the end there, you see a Mark McGuire, headliner XL. Above him's a headliner uh, XL, but that's Michael Lobacondi. He was a former number one overall pick in the NBA draft, I think 1999, by the Clippers. Todd Helton, Mark McGuire. And up here, you see a little two-pack of Michael Jordan and David Robinson called NBA Jams. It was made by Mattel. And again, they vaguely resemble like bobbleheads, but smaller in scale. And Mattel made some of these pieces back again in the late 90s. That's a Kazi Shi bobblehead made by the Forever Company. A Tim Hudson Greg Maddox two pack. The only figure of Tim Hudson, uh, either McFarlane or Hasbro, would issue. Another Griffey figure there. Toys R Us exclusive, I think. Headliner XL. There's Vlad Guerrero, Sammy Sosa two pack. And above, there's a Dennis Rodman, Carl Malone, NBA Jams two pack, still with the KB toy sticker on there. A couple of hand-painted bobbleheads here of Sammy Sosa and, and Ichiro after he won Rookie of the Year in 2001. And then down here, you got Sammy again in the pinstripes and Cal Ripken Jr. More of those same bobbleheads in the late 90s, uh, but these are football. There's Dan Marino and Ricky Williams. And above them, you have Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, and Brian Erlock. A few more baseball bobbleheads here. But these bobbleheads are produced by the Upper Deck Company. And there's Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Derek Jeter, Ichiro. And there's Mark McGuire in the gray jersey. Gray jersey bobbleheads from Upper Deck are Chase figure. A few more of the gray jersey Chase ones here. There's Cal Ripken, Sammy Sosa, Ernie Banks. On the end here is Nolan Ryan. And this is a little mini standee of former Blackhawks goaltender Ed Belfour. I think my sister actually got me this one year for my birthday. Comes with a little trading card. A few more headliner XL by Corinthian here. Uh, three college football players left to right are Curtis Enos, Terrell Davis in the middle, and then Warwick Dunn on the right. And next to Dunn is one of my favorites. That's Vince Lombardi. Kind of a cool likeness of him. Back to McFarland sports picks. Here are a few hockey figures. These are from that inaugural wave of hockey sports picks from back in 2000. And therefore, they don't have the team logos on the jerseys like we saw with the Patrick Waugh in the Master Bedroom. Just to show you here, this is Brian Boucher, goaltender of the Philadelphia Flyers. But again, you don't see the Flyers logo on his chest. It's the NHLPA logo because, once again, Todd didn't have the license to do logos at that time. And there's Steve Eiserman, Pavel Bure. That's Ray Bork. And on the end there is Tony Amani. More loose sports picks on this side of the hockey. It's Dominic Hasek. Yarmer Yager, Curtis Joseph, and Paul Correa. What a little Derek Jeter uh, diecast card, sports card behind him. More loose sports picks down here, this time at baseball. There's a couple of Sammy Sosa. Over here are some Mets players. That's Carlos Delgado, David Wright, and Pedro Martinez. Don't have very many loose sports picks at all in my collection. Like 99% of my sports pick collection is, again, mint and mint package. But here's just a few of the loose ones I have. More loose baseball sports picks down here. And interspersed in between the loose baseball sports picks are some mini bobbleheads, like this one here at Ichiro. 
And another one over here, Alex Rodriguez. And these little mini bobbleheads were inserted in cereal boxes. Don't remember which brand. In little poly bags back in the day. There's another bigger Alex Rodriguez figure there. And a couple here of Mark McGuire. And the last of the baseball down here, Chipper Jones. With a little mini bobblehead, Chipper Jones. And Luis Gonzalez mini bobble. And there's a couple of figures of Barry Bonds with a Jason Giambi mini bobblehead. A few more starting lineup figures here from the late 90s. These four figures came in a collectible replica Wheaties box, as you can see here. And they were also packaged with a little gold coin. And here you got Nolan Ryan. The Bambino himself, Babe Ruth. John Elway. And on the end here, Brett Favre. And we'll close out the display with these three figures right here. These are also starting lineup figures from Kenner Hasbro. Again, late 90s. And these are from a series called Stadium Stars. Uh, these Stadium Stars figures are seen here of Nomar Garcia Parra, uh, Chipper Jones, and Alex Rodriguez. They were a little bit bigger than your standard starting lineup figure. I think these ones here were 6-inch figures as opposed to the standard 4-inch. And they also came with a little collector's base that has like a replica autograph on there from each player. From baseball and basketball, we move on to hockey. These are Imports Dragon NHL figures. We had seen these figures previously in the video in the master bedroom on display. And the figures here, uh, these ones are from the 2015-2016 inaugural line, the first year that Imports Dragon started doing NHL figures after McFarland stopped doing them. And here is Zach Parisi and James Van Riemsdyk. There's Rick Nash and Morgan Riley. And down here you see Drew Doughty and Mark Giordano. The hockey figures continue along the top of the wall here. As far as player selection goes, I try to pick up all the goalie figures that Imports Dragon made for their inaugural line, as well as any forwards or defensemen that McFarland didn't include in his uh, series of NHL. Just backtracking right here, there you see a Henrik Lundqvist figure. Here you see Sean Gallagher and Johnny Goudreau. Again, McFarland never made Gallagher Goudreau in, their, in his uh, line of hockey, so I picked him up in the imports line. And there's Jonathan Bernier over here. These are the first pieces of Nathan McKinnon and Connor McDavid. First ones to market. There's Carey Price. Jonathan Quick. And Tuka Rask. Over here, continuing on this wall, you got Pekka Rene, Ryan Miller, Andre Pavlik, Corey Perry, Vlad Tarasenko, and Jonathan Taves, and Shea Weber on the end. Here's a few McFarland mini figures. These three football figures measure only two and a half inches in scale and were distributed via blind bag, meaning the figures came in a little poly bag and you didn't know which one you were getting, kind of like trading cards. And there was also chase and surprise figures. Here you see a couple of Brandon Marshall, the Chicago Bears, the right, uh, the right figure on the left, the white chase in the, in the middle. And over here is Damani Pecco. He was also considered a chase figure. A couple more here, hockey ones. These are from Import Dragon. Same deal, distributed via blind bag. And these two come with like a trading card there that was meant to be played with a board game. They had different levels. Here's a Jacob Truba bronze level, I think 2,000 produced with a black base. There's Joe Pavelski. He was silver level. 1,000 of those produced with a silver base. After silver, there was gold of 500 or less, but I don't have any of those in my collection. And here's a little 
line bag uh, Derek Carr mini mate figure. The few stadium giveaway figures I have in this room. Here's seeing one of Chris Sale from the Chicago White Sox. Can only be obtained at the ballpark on a promotional giveaway day with paid admission ticket. It says below there, stretch. Because I believe this figure was made of like rubber and if removed from the package can be pulled and stretched. I think I actually scored an extra one of these and sent it to Mo for a change rather than, his, rather than Mo sending it to me. <laughs> Speaking of my buddy Mo, he provided me with this for my collection. It's another stadium giveaway of, uh, of Tampa Bay Rays pitcher Chris Archer, who of course is now with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Can only be obtained uh, at the stadium once again. And it's made in the mold of an old school uh, starting lineup figure. As you can see with the trading card that it comes with, it says starting lineup at the top. And once again, given away at the ballpark on game day. Uh, it came in a cardboard package, but the package was pretty beat up, so I just removed it and displayed it loose. And this last stadium giveaway I have in the room is probably my coolest and most unique one. Uh, what you're seeing there is Chipper Rescues Freddy. And that's Chipper Jones riding an ATV in, in camel fatigues on the front there. And on the back of the, the ATV, behind Chipper in the black jacket, is Freddie Freeman. And there's a little backstory behind this. Um, both Chipper Jones and Freddie Freeman play for the Atlanta Braves. Chipper's a Hall of Fame legend, and Freddie currently plays for the Braves. And it was snowing down there in the Atlanta region one, uh, one winter. And so Freddie Freeman got his car stuck in the snow. I guess they don't have any snow plows down there to, to remove the snow in the streets. And he put a uh, tweet out there that he's stuck in traffic. And I think the story goes that Chipper Jones saw the tweet, immediately jumped on his ATV there because the ATV is not going to get stuck in the snow. And he came and he rescues Freddie Freeman. And yeah, that's Chipper rescuing Freddie, but again, both, both Braves players on the back of his ATV. Just a, a very cool, unique stadium giveaway piece. And again, thank you, Mo, for providing me that one for my collection. Now, these two football figures up on the wall in the plastic protecto cases are the last two sports figures that I want to show you in this room. Uh, before I show them to you, let me just backtrack a second and thank Carm from Canada for providing me with a lot of the NHL imports dragon figures that we saw here in showroom B. I know I do a lot of thinking and acknowledging throughout this video, but believe me when I tell you guys, it's justified and warranted. Uh, the little group of guys that I have who send me stuff um, over the years, uh, they're just, they're the best and they really, they really deserve to be thanked. So as far as these two figures go, these football figures, what we're seeing here is an Edger and James figure. He's getting inducted in the Pro Football Hall of Fame this summer. And above him, Eddie George, who had an extremely successful NFL career with the Titans and also in college with Ohio State. These are what we call the no-helmet chase figures. And they were released way back in 2001 in the first series of NFL figures that Todd produced. But if you notice... They don't have helmets on, as all the other football figures do in, in McFarland lines. Instead, they have head sculpts. You can see here on, on Eddie George, same thing. The, the head is sculpted. And these figures were considered very, very rare back in the day. Much harder to find than the regular Jersey Chase figures. And these figures here even kind of gave birth to the term Super Chase. Uh, we don't know how many of these were out there specifically because Todd didn't release production numbers back then the way he has over the over the recent years with the collector's level pieces but it's but regardless of how many are out there these are very tough to find and they're still highly sought after and collected today and I do have more of these in my collection which I'll show you later but again these are the no helmet super chase figures from back in the day Moving on from the sports figures, we'll take a look at some other figures that have been assigned to show to showroom B. Uh, starting with these Star Wars Force Awakens three and three quarters inch figures that dangle off the door of my room. Uh, these figures, uh, quite honestly, are nothing special. I just picked these guys up uh, after the film release some years ago, and some of the characters I liked in the film. Uh, enlarge it here so you can take a look. Here's a uh, Guavian. And a TIE fighter pilot here. Some stormtroopers. Of course, as we know, uh, Force Awakens was the first Star Wars film that was not Lucas produced. 
Lucas no longer owns the franchise as we know, but instead it's owned by the Disney Company. General Hux over here. And up top is Captain Phasma. And also, too, like the Hasbro company who produces these, um, they've released other Star Wars lines like Bla uh, Black Series and Vintage that are geared more for like the adult collectors like myself, as opposed to these figures you're seeing here, uh, which are pretty basic and maybe for like kids who just want to own a toy and open it and play with it. Speaking of Star Wars Black Series, here are some 6-inch ones that hang above the doorway of the room. Uh, some of these are retail exclusive uh, figures, so let me go ahead and show them to you. Starting from left, there is Captain Phasma. It's a First Order Snow Trooper Officer, Toys R Us exclusive. Imperial Shock Trooper here, that's a Walmart exclusive from the Battlefront video game. Darth Vader Emperor's Wrath, where you see the, the electrostatic around his head. And that was a Walgreens exclusive at Vader. There's Ahsoka Tano. She's cool. Um, anytime I see her figure, I pretty much pick up from my collection. It's a Scarif uh, Stormtrooper squad leader. Walmart exclusive on that one, I believe. Darth Revan. Revan was real hard to find back in the day. He was like one of the hardest in the wave to find was Revan. There's an Imperial ATACT driver, Target exclusive. Commander Gree, Toys R Us exclusive. And Grand Admiral Thrawn on the end there. A few more Star Wars 6-inch Black Series I want to show you. We're actually back in the Master Bedroom, I must confess. Because <laughs> earlier in the video, I forgot to show you these. And then when I was showing you Black Series and Showroom B, it reminded me, oh, you forgot about these in the Master Bedroom. So we'll go ahead and just take a look at them real quickly here. Uh, on the left here is Genius Solo. Hard to find back in the day. Thanks, Jason, for hooking me up with that one. And there's Toys R Us exclusive Zuckus. And the Imperial Jump Trooper, GameStop exclusive. Obi-Wan Kenobi Force Spirit was a Walgreens exclusive. And here on the end is the Mimbam Stormtrooper, which was a Walmart exclusive. Also very hard to find. Back in showroom B and continuing on with Star Wars figures. Here's a little Kylo Ren display I set up. Uh, after I saw Force Awakens, Kylo Ren was my favorite character from the film. In the previous three films, it was Darth Maul, and I bought up all his figures. And in Force Awakens, I started buying up Kylo Ren. So we'll just show you these Kylo figures from right to left. There's a three and three quarters inch mask Kylo. And there he is, unmasked. This is a black series, three and three quarters inch, Walmart exclusive. And then next to him is the 6-inch Black Series Kylo. This one's pretty cool. It's a Kmart exclusive, and it has Kylo with the Starkiller base. And then here is a Disney Store exclusive Kylo Ren, unmasked. Moving along the wall, at the top, we have more Black Series. These are three and three quarters inch Walmart exclusive. There's Han Solo in the Carbon Freeze. Clone Commander Thorn. That's Clone Commander Doom. Kind of resembles Doctor Doom, Fantastic Four villain. These are Star Wars Rebels figures from the animated series. Here's Clone Commander Gree. ATDP driver, another TIE fighter pilot, and on the end there's the Inquisitor. This is a 12-inch Boba Fett. 
Uh, I picked this up for my collection because when I was a kid growing up in the 80s, I had the original 12-inch Boba Fett that came in the box. And I remember my grandma taking me to Toys R Us, and she bought it for me. I, took it out. I couldn't wait to take it out and play with it. And this is a pretty similar replica that uh, you know Hasbro Disney produced a few years back. And like I said, it just it brings back uh, memories, nostalgia. And Boba Fett is one of, one of my favorite characters, so I had to pick this up for the collection. And more Black Series, three and three quarters inch here. We see Mara Jade, Clone Commander Neo, and Darth Plagueis. And the Jade and the Plagueis were particularly tough to find, especially in good condition. Here's a couple Star Wars chase fairs from back in the day. They were part of the Galactic Hunt, for those who remember as Boba Fett and a, snow, and a snow trooper. And what makes these figures chases is the silver base that you find in each package. If the figure was packaged up with a silver base and foil, Star Wars uh, etched in foil here at the top, then it was a chase figure. Again, part of that whole Galactic Hunt series. And one more Star Wars figure. It's a two-pack of Obi-Wan and Darth Maul. And the Maul here, let's get a better look at it. As you can see, the Darth Maul is in a kind of a special costume. You don't see him in that costume too often. So when I, again, I'm a big Darth Maul collector, so when I saw that one, I wanted it for the collection. Here's a Star Wars uh, Battlefront II clone pack of six figures, available only through Toys R Us. Uh, for those who remember back in the day, these were particularly hard to find because it seemed like Toys R Us didn't stock very many of these. And when they did have them, they, they flew off the shelves pretty quickly. Next to that one's a Holiday Edition Yoda, where he's dressed up like a little Santa Claus. And I think that was exclusive to the Hasbro shop or the Hasbro online store. More Star Wars exclusives here. On the right, that's a Gamorrean Guard uh, Black Series Deluxe 6-inch, complete with weapons and exclusive to Target. And over here is a Star Wars Visionaries Comic 2-pack. This is a Star Wars convention exclusive from about 10 years ago, and it's got Darth Maul and Uncle Owen Lars in there. As you can see on the Maul, he's got the mechanical legs, because everybody knows he was cut in half in the film, in the crown. And then down here we got uh, Imperial Shadow Squadron 2-pack, Target exclusive. Very cool and very hard to find. There's one on the speeder bike there, and there's the other Shadow Trooper inside there. And here's a Black Series TIE Fighter Pilot. Right here in the corner of the room, I have a Masters of the Universe display set up. And because it's in the corner of the room and kind of buried back here, it's difficult to see the display, I know. So I'm going to show it to you as best I can. Um, these figures you're seeing here uh, preceded the Maddie Collector uh, uh, Masters of the Universe figures that you can only get from the Maddie website that I showed you back in Showroom A. These figures uh, came out back uh, in the early 2000s. I want to say between 2001 and 2004. And they were available at retail stores. All the big retailers carried them. Toys R Us, Target, Walmart. Made by Mattel. And again, they just, you know, the, the big names of the vintage 80s line of Master Universe. You can see down there, there's Mechanic and Merman. Uh, Skeletor couple different versions of them, a basic there, and then like they call that the Disco Skeletor, where he's in these gaudy colors on the right there. And there you can see Cyclone, capture Ram Man down there. There's another version of Skeletor, the Spin Blade Skeletor. Coming up here, there's Triclops. Again, you got like kind of a basic version on the left, and then a different, uh, a different costume version on the right. This whip last year is kind of interesting because in this line of uh, Master of the Universe variations that exist, I'm going to show you right here. If you look at this whip last year, you see he's got an all bronze belt around his waist. And if you look at his, his staff, his spear, it's bronze with a silver tip. And this version of Whiplash, you can see, has a little bit uh, different belt, silver belt buckle. And if you look at the spear, it's all bronze. So again, you could see uh, variations existed. And they were harder to find, obviously. And they were produced in lesser quantities. I don't know if that was intentional by Mattel or not. Some consider a chase figure. Going back to the top of the display, there's, there's too bad. 
These two figures are from the Snake Man uh, wave. Very difficult to find because very little of the Snake Man wave made it to retail. There's a Venom Spitting Con figure. And over here is Zodak. Down here is Master Universe 2-pack of Skeletor and uh, He-Man. And below there is like a Super Friends Batman. Again, buried in the corner. And then on the end of this display is actually, speaking of uh, DC characters, a New God's Dark Side, which I know is not a Masters of the Universe figure, but I just really needed something to plug the end of this uh, pegboard and Dark Side seemed to, dark side seemed to fit the mold there. So. Right here in the corner of the room, I have a Masters of the Universe display set up. And because it's in the corner of the room and kind of buried back here, it's difficult to see the display, I know. So I'm going to show it to you as best I can. Um, these figures you're seeing here uh, preceded the Maddie Collector uh, uh, Master Universe figures that you can only get from the Maddie website that I showed you back in Showroom A. These figures uh, came out back uh, in the early 2000s. I want to say between 2001 and 2004. And they were available at retail stores. All the big retailers carried them, Toys R Us, Target, Walmart, made by Mattel. And again, they just, you know, the, the big names of the vintage 80s line of Master Universe, you can see down there, there's Mechanic and Merman, uh, Skeletor, a couple different versions of them, a basic there, and then like, they call that the Disco Skeletor, where it's in these gaudy colors on the right there. And there you can see Cyclone, Capture Ram Man down there. There's another version of Skeletor, the Spin Blade Skeletor. Coming up here, there's Triclops. Again, you got like kind of a basic version on the left, and then a different uh, a different costume version on the right. This Whiplash here is kind of interesting because in this line of uh, Master Universe variations that exist, I'm going to show you right here. If you look at this Whiplash here, you see he's got an all bronze belt around his waist, and if you look at his, his staff, his spear, it's bronze with a silver tip. And this version of Whiplash, you can see, has a little bit uh, different belt, silver belt buckle. And if you look at the spear, it's all bronze. So again, you can see uh, variations existed. And they were harder to find, obviously, and they were produced in lesser quantities. I don't know if that was intentional by Mattel or not. Some consider it a chase figure. Going back to the top of the display, there's, there's too bad. These two figures are from the Snake Man uh, wave. Very difficult to find because very little of the Snake Man wave made it to retail. There's a Venom Spitting Con figure. And over here is Zodak. Down here is Master Universe 2-pack of Skeletor and uh, He-Man. And below there is like a Super Friends Batman, again buried in the corner. And then on the end of this display is actually, speaking of uh, DC characters, a New God's Dark Side, which I know is not a Masters of the Universe figure, but I just really needed something to plug the end of this uh, pegboard, and Dark Side seemed to, seem to fit the mold there. So, On to some comic book characters now. This display is Spider-Man Villains. A little bit of background on these figures. These are six-inch scale figures made by a company called Toy Biz back in the day. Same time frame as the Master Universe figures. They were coming out between 2001 and 2004. Um, and they were coming out through all the different retailers. Target, Walmart, Toys R Us were carrying them. And these villains were all short-packed. And what I mean by that is... If you were to stumble upon a solid case of these Spider-Man figures made by Toy Biz, and many times I'd be up at a Walmart, 10 o'clock at night, the toy pallets would be out on the sales floor, and there'd just be cases of these Toy Biz figures stacked up on a pallet. And so I pop one open, and let's just say there was 12 figures in that particular case. Well, 11 of those 12 figures would be Spider-Man figures, and only one would be the villain. And Toy Biz made all kinds of different versions of Spider-Man. There was, you know, 
the the zip and flip Spider Man, the web slinger Spider Man, super strength Spider Man, Spider Man with a bent light post. So clearly, Toy Biz is trying to push Spider Man as their product. And I wasn't really interested in the Spider Man figure because I had plenty of those in my collection already. I was interested in obtaining the villains. And again, there will only be one villain in the case and 11 Spider Man figures. And then if you're a collector like me who collects, um, you know, mint package, well, good luck finding that one villain in the case in a good mint package that's not all, you know, bent corners and smashed clamshell. So I made a particular challenge. And so once again, all these villains were short packed in those Spider-Man cases made by Toy Biz. Most of the major Spider-Man villains here, examining them close, going left to right, there's Mysterio. There's the Hobgoblin, a very cool looking Venom, and Morbius, Daredevil, who's kind of like a frenemy of Spider-Man of sorts, Craven the Hunter, interesting version of Green Goblin there, and you got the Sandman. And Scorpion. And there's Rhino. Lizard. Carnage. Now in this Stella Venom, we're late in the run in these Toy Biz figures. You notice how the package changes going from a red package to a, a blue one. Uh, Mad Jack. Electro, the last villain. These two figures here aren't Spider-Man villains, but they're made by Toy Biz. There's a Invisible Woman, Sue Storm, and like the clear version of her. And over here's a Transforming Super Scroll. Very tough to find this figure. And there was a few different versions of the scroll uh, issued. Different, I think, heads and are and like hands. Uh, like and the, one version of them has like clear hands or something like that. Um, but all the versions are hard to find. And then some Marvel Legends here. This was the Marvel Legends Infinite Series 6-inch that Hasbro introduced back in 2013 in the boxes. This is the Green Goblin Build-A-Figure Wave. And there is Toxin. And Spider-Girl. And here is Agent Venom. He was a Walgreens exclusive. And then a couple series later, you get Winter Soldier. And more Marvel Legends figures on, on the far wall here. Uh, all different waves. Start taking a look at them up close. Starting from left here is Demolition Man from the Build-A-Figure Red Skull wave. These, here, these three are from the Juggernaut Wave, build a figure. You got Cable, Deadpool, and Marvel's Colossus. Here's another Green Goblin from the Spider-Man build a figure wave. And Serpent Society from the Thanos Wave. Down here in the corner, a couple of Walgreens exclusive uh, legends, Silver Surfer and Human Torch. And you can see the Walgreens sticker on the package there of each one. Here's a couple of Marvel Studios first 10 years figures. This is an Ultron. It was a shared convention GameStop exclusive. And there's Red Skull. Here's an Ant-Man Yellow Jacket 2-pack from the first 10 years. A Deluxe Ghost Rider packaged up with his motorcycle, the Flames. The Archangel. And here on the end is a Spider-Man Vulture 2-pack, Walmart exclusive, Ultimate Spider-Man. More Marvel figures here. These are the Infinite Series, three and three quarters inch scale. Going from left. 
There's Marvel's Death Marvel's Death's Head. Grim Reaper. Two versions here of Sandman on the left. You see, I got basic Sandman in the green top and brown pants. And then here on the right, it's kind of a sanded out version of Sandman. Ares. And Vulture. And the Infinite series continues over here on this side. Daredevil in a black costume. Doc Ock. There's the Ultimate Spider-Man. A living Laser. And Marvel's Vision. And on the end there you see one more Marvel one more Marvel Legend character. That's uh, Bulldozer. Here's a couple of Sano Comic Con exclusive Marvel pieces. Uh, this one on the left here is the Infinity Gauntlet. And it was a 2014 Sano Comic Con exclusive piece. As you can see what the sticker says there. Only available at uh, Comic Con in San Diego. With a small number of these available on the Hasbro Toy Shop website after the convention was over. Which is how I got mine. And it's got four exclusive figures in it. There's Star Fox. Thanos. Lady Death and Nebula. And there's the Thanos' uh, Infinity Gauntlet. Pretty cool looking uh, piece here. Just the whole packaging and setup. And this one's from uh, 2015 Comic Con. And this is the Pym Industries exclusive. And essentially it's, it's four versions of Hank Pym. Uh, there's Hank Pym as Goliath. There he is as Giant Man. There's Pym himself. And then down there, there's like two versions of Ant-Man. Um, the one on the right is Hank Pym, the tiny one. And the other, the other Ant-Man is Scott Lang. And again, only available at the convention back in 2015 or small number of pieces available on the website after the convention ended. Closing out the Marvel figures here with the last three. Uh, here's one. It's a Deadpool Weapon X 12-inch figure where Deadpool is featured in this black costume. Different head sculpts and weapons inside the package. This Weapon X version. Here's a Marvel Select Hulkbuster that was available through the Disney Store. I was in the Disney Store one day checking this figure out and I realized I don't have any Hulkbuster figures in my collection. So I decided to pick this one up. And the last Marvel figure here in showroom B is this one. It's a Marvel Gallery Dark Phoenix. It was a shared exclusive between San Diego Comic Con and GameStop back in 2017. It's just a pretty cool looking figure. Again, I'm a fan of Dark Phoenix. And when I saw this one, I wanted it for the collection. You can see she's in like a metallic outfit. I like the packaging. Nice figure. Moving from Marvel to DC characters here, we see three Batman figures from the DC Collectibles wave from maybe four or five years ago. Here's just a, a basic kind of Batman figure from that wave. Uh, same wave, there's the Arkham Knight. And here's a Red Hood figure, which actually was a GameStop exclusive, as indicated in the package. Another Batman from the Designer series, um, Greg Capullo version. This one down here is particularly cool. Again, another one of those shared exclusives between the San Diego Comic-Con and GameStop. It's a Jim Lee Batman 
almost like a prototype figure, sketch figure, I guess you would say. Just very cool looking. Um, again, like an early sketch type release of him. There's a little, little bio on it. They also made a Superman like this as well a couple years later. One last DC figure here. It's a little one-inch Lex Luthor superpower figure that was a Walgreens exclusive. Time for some movie figures. These are figures from some of my favorite films with a particular emphasis on horror films. So I'll begin with the Michael Myers collection. Yes, I'm a huge fan of the Halloween film franchise of Michael Myers. Uh, these three figures of Michael were produced by NECA between the years 2002 and 2008, I would say. Uh, Let's we'll start with these two right here. These are actually uh, figures from the Rob Zombie uh, films that came out, again, 2006, 2007, 2008, I think was when those films came out. And those were Rob Zombie versions of, of Halloween. And we could start right here with this one. And Rob Zombie film, Halloween. You see Michael there with the bloody hands. And get a little closer on the head sculpt. And this is from the, again, Rob, Rob Zombie version from Halloween 2. There he's got that bloody mask. And this one's a very uh, particularly softer version of Michael Myers from the original 1979 John Carpenter film. Uh, again, it comes with a removable bed sheet. It's from that iconic scene in the film, for those who recall, where the girl's lying in bed and her boyfriend gets up to go to the bathroom. And then Michael appears in the doorway of the room with the bed sheet over him. And the girl thinks her boyfriend's playing a prank on her. So, you know, she kind of goes along with it for a while. Uh, little does she realize that actually Michael Myers has murdered her boyfriend and will soon murder her, fortunately. <clears throat> And from Michael, we go to Jason Voorhees, uh, and now we're on Metzko Toys. These figures of Jason were produced by the Metzko Toy Company, and there's a version of Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, the final chapter. You can see inside the package, he's got uh, uh, weapons included and an alternate head sculpt, bloody, because, well, let's face it, he kills a lot of people in his films. More Jason figures over here from different, uh, from different Friday the 13th films. This one's from part three. And again, you see the alternate head and weapons and package. Here's from Jason Lives. Part six. For those who remember the Jason Goes to Hell film that came out back around 93 or 94. And this one on the end is from the reboot. Uh, I think it was in 2009, they rebooted Friday the 13th and kind of gave Jason a little different look. Still pretty big, maybe even a little more muscular. One more Jason figure here. Pretty much the same as the one we just saw from the 2009 reboot. I think the difference is this one comes with a, an alternate head sculpt there. Still, of course, with his signature machete. More movie figures down here on this shelf, going from right to left. We'll see David, the vampire from the film Lost Boys. Uh, Keeper Sutherland Extraordinaire. Here's a Jigsaw Killer from the Saw film. And packaged up with him in the back there, you could see a little puppet. There's a tricycle back there too. There was also a version of this figure produced where he's uh, unmasked without the pig's mask on. You actually see John Kramer's uh, sculpted head. Mentioned you with the Funkos. I'm a big fan of Die Hard, so of course I had to get the John McClane figure. Bloody uh, Dago T and Machine Gun. And then we got over here, Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. And I want to pull this one out and show it to you up close. These little accessories he comes with. Yeah, you can see there, there's a couple knives, an alternate hand. The headphones that he wears when he wears the Walkman and the uh, the porno tape inside Lydia's ass that he watches in the film, as well as the nail gun. 
Yeah, I just I I'm a I'm a big fan of that film, and when I saw this figure, I'm like, oh, I gotta have it for the collection. So. Moving figures continue on this shelf. On the left here are a couple of Hannibal Lecter figures from Sounds of the Lambs. Yes, one of my favorite films. Uh, this one here, this Lecter here, comes with a hand cart and mask. Um, you can't see the mask inside. And unfortunately, it's behind the lettering, kind of buried in the package there. But it's a pretty good uh, head sculpt to Anthony Hopkins. Pretty accurate. And here's, of course, where... Uh, he beats Sergeant Prembury to death with the uh, the nightstick. And a little diorama from his cell in that uh, famous scene in the film. Again, with the bloody mouth. When he, when he, uh, when he eats Pembry's tongue. <laughs> here is Reagan from The Exorcist. And this is the spider walk version of her. Of her. Uh, for those who are familiar with the film, there was an uncut version of this film that appeared years later after it was released, where it shows Reagan like spider walking backwards down the stairs of her home and spitting out blood, and that's a recreation of it. Very cool. And the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers 2. I have four more figures in this shelf, going left to right here. That is Tony Montana from, from Scarface. And that's the fuzz. It says they're the fall of the package. Uh, and then one of the final scenes of the film where he's all coked up there. And he utters the words, You want to play rough? Okay. Say hello, my little friend. Which is right there. The M16. That's Don Vito Corleone from The Godfather. That one's actually produced by McFarlane, not Necco. There is Pai Mei from Kill Bill. And you can see there in the package on him, his beard is like curved, like a wind blowing through it. There's also a version of him with a straight beard, but I think the curved, uh, the curved beard version was a little more difficult to find. This is not a movie figure, but it's from the Resident Evil game, the video game. It's Executioner Magini. Ah, I just saw this figure at Toys R Us and thought that is a cool figure, all bloody with the apron on. So I want it for my collection. Four figures from the Terminator films. Uh, there's a T-800, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Final Battle. Again, with accessories and a alternate head sculpt. And these are all of Robert Patrick, who's the T-1000 Terminator. There he is with his head split. And the bullet holes. And those hooks, those metal hooks, because you can morph in anything with metal. There's another one of them. There's a liquid metal T-1000. Again, complete with accessories. And there is the cool-looking liquid nitrogen T-1000, where he's impersonating the, the bike cop. Here are some Funko Reaction figures. Yes, it's the same Funko company that makes the, the Funko Pops. And they're just different movie figures that were produced uh, that I bought from my collection. Going left to right, there's Tony Montana again from Scarface. And Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver. Robert Dinner with the Mohawk there. <laughs> Eric Draven from The Crow. Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street. Ghostface from the film Scream. There's Michael Myers. Pinhead from Hellraiser. A couple of Jason Voorhees on the, on the right here. Uh, there's one where he's got the, the green coat on. And there's a bloody one. And that was exclusive, as you can see there on the, the label. Uh, 2016 New York Comic Con exclusive. And the Funko Reaction figures continue here with a couple from Pulp Fiction. You see there Jimmy Dimmick and Vincent Vega. There's actually a whole lot more from the film, a lot of our characters. I just, I never got them from my collection. I always kind of wish I'd had. And then back to Terminator uh, uh, figures here in the Funko Reaction line. There's a basic T-800. And the T-800 is skeleton, the exoskeleton. And then more Robert Patrick for you here. The T-1000 Patrolman. You see there it's basic. 
T1000 frozen. And over here, the T1000 in liquid metal form. And then more of them on the end there. Uh, the T1000 patrol in there he is. You see all shot up with bullet holes. And this one is a convention exclusive uh, where he's got a hole in his head. And you see there the, the label shows. So a 2015 summer convention exclusive. More reaction figures on this display. I'll go on left to right. There we see the alien from the film, the alien. And here are four different versions of Predator. There's a Predator masked. There's Predator invisible. There it is, half cloaked. This one's kind of cool. That's the Predator in heat signature form. As we learn in Predator Part 2 from Peter Keyes, played by Gary Busey, the Predator sees us by seeing our heat. So I guess that's how he would see himself. On to Karate Kid, where we see Ellie, the Karate Kid himself, Daniel LaRusso. There's Daniel in his karate uniform with the championship trophy. A couple members of our beloved Cobra Kai, leader John Kreese, and former champ Johnny Lawrence. Who could forget Mr. Miyagi? Here is Lilo from The Fifth Element, Mila Jovovich. And on the end here, a couple from Back to the Future. You got Biff Tannen and Marty McFly. This is a Jaws reaction figure. And this one's particularly cool because two versions of it exist. There's a basic edition and there's a special edition made... You can see here for the 2015 Summer Convention Exclusive, where it shows Jaws eating Quint. The blood splatter there. Just uh, just very cool. More figures from TV and movie here on this display from some of my favorite films and TV shows. Here are my Breaking Bad figures. It's one of my favorite TV shows, as well as a spinoff Better Call Saul. We'll take a look at them from the top left here. Here are those uh, Funko Reaction 3 and 3 quarters inch figures. Uh, there's Gust Gustavo Fring, Heisenberg, Jesse Pinkman, Jesse and Walter White in a hazmat suit. And there's Walter in his underwear and button-down shirt from that season one when he and Jesse were cooking in the trailer. And down here you see some Metzko figures, 6-inch scale. Breaking Bad figures. There's Heisenberg. The two different versions um, in different uh, jackets and, 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 and shirts. Each one comes with a bag of money inside the package there and a pistol in his right hand. And again, he's just wearing different uh, shirts and jackets in these two. There's Walter White. Again, different shirt and jacket. Pretty much the same pose, although this one, as you can see in the package, doesn't have the sunglasses on. And this was a uh, 2015 or sorry, 2014 Mesco exclusive at the uh, convention exclusive, only available at the Mesco booth. Uh, some of these available at the Mesco store online after the convention was over. Down here you got Walter and Jesse in hazmat suits once again with the little masks that they wear. There's Gustavo Fring again, and Saul Goodman. Here are a couple of Breaking Bad Collector's Box Editions. Here on the left, you got Saul again. Uh, same pose as the single card figure. Only difference is his suit, tie, and shirt are a different color. If you can see inside the package here, he comes with a U.S. Constitution diorama. Because in the TV show, in his office behind his desk, he had a big replica of the United States Constitution hanging off his wall. And there he also comes with a bag of money. And this box edition, a box edition of Jesse Pinkman just has him in a different hazmat suit where he also comes with a mask. And one last Breaking Bad figure here. This one's really cool. It's another Gus Fring uh, figure, but this one's a special edition. It's called Gus Fring Dead. You can observe his, his face there. Uh, that just powerful scene in the TV show when he 
when the bomb goes off in Salamanca's uh, room and Gus exits the room and adjusts his tie and half his face is blown off. Also here he comes with a little bucket of Los Pueblos Romanos chicken. Here in the center of the display is a Reagan from the Exorcist Deluxe Boxed Edition. Uh, this one has her in her bed, tied down there as you can see. And what's really cool about this figure, and I'll show you it says it right here. Right there on the box it says, motorized head spins 360 degrees. Which in fact it does if you remove it from the package. Just a very cool looking figure there. Here's my Big Lebowski display. This film has such a huge following, and, well, I'm a part of it. A couple of figures here of the Dude and Walter, and they were made by a company called Biff Bang Pow. And there's the dude with his hoodie and pajama bottoms on and bowling ball. And over here we got Walter. These are both from Series 2. On the side of the package here, there you see the, the briefcase. The ringer. Uh -huh. And the center is some die cast from Greenlight Machine. That's the dude, 73 Ford Gran Torino. Spiffy little, spiffy little automobile that he drives in the, in the film. And up top here is Walter Subcheck's uh, security van. There's actually a menu from the In-N-Out Burger chain. My sister picked it up for me when she was out west because she knows I like the film so much. And she's a big fan of the film too as well. And the display concludes with some Sons of Anarchy figures. Another great TV show. Really enjoyed it when it was on. There's a couple different versions of Clay. There's basic version and him with a different colored shirt and bandana on. Entertainment Earth exclusive. And you got Gemma with skateboarding package. On the end is Opie. Bottom row is all figures of Jax, the main character from the show. There's Jax Basic. Jax with special jacket and jeans on. It comes with a knife in the package. Entertainment Earth exclusive Jax with shades and ball cap on. And then on the end here are two different versions of Jax. These are uh, con exclusives from 2014. Where they have them in different, uh, different color prison outfits. This is the only Texas Chainsaw Massacre figure I have in my collection. It's made by Metzko Toys, and it's from a series of figures called Cinema Fear Screen Grabs. And this one recreates a scene from the 2002 version of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where it has, as you can see there, Leatherface slicing poor Jonathan Tucker in half from the bottom. Pretty graphic, I know. And notice how the figures are in black and white, um, the basic version of this one had the figures in the in the little diorama there in color, but chase versions of this had the figures there again in black and white. So this one was like harder to find. There are two figures from the engineer from the film Prometheus. Prometheus was a prequel film to the Aliens franchise. On top there you have engineer in the chair suit. That's the the alpha he wears when he when he pilots the ship in the film. And below that one's a hard to find version of it. It's the uh, engineer in a holographic chair suit. A few more Predator figures to show you. This one here is a 25th anniversary Dark Horse Comics edition Predator in the box here. And that's how he appeared in the comic book when it came out 25 years ago back in 89. Alien vs. Predator box set here. It's the Grid Alien vs. Celtic Predator. And it was a Toys R Us exclusive. And you see Predator with the mask on. And weapons. And the Grid Alien. A 
Another comic book based Predator here. This one's a 2015 convention exclusive. It's the Ambush Predator in full cloak form. The last two Predator figures to show you in the room here in the boxes. On the right is the Jungle Demon Predator in half cloak form. And the left is the Rick Hawkins figure from the 30th anniversary series. Uh, for those who remember the original Predator film, Hawkins was the comic relief, the raunchy joke teller. And that Rick Hawkins figure was a Comic-Con exclusive with a small amount available in the NECA store after the convention was over. Thank you, Mo, for scoring me that one, Mo from Arizona. And also what makes that figure particularly special is the fact that NECA only produced two different characters from the Predator films. The Predator himself, we've seen several already, and Dutch, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Hawkins is the only the third character from the film that NECA produced. Finishing out TV and movie figures are a couple figures from the TV show Preacher, which I really enjoyed when it was running on AMC. On the left here, you got Jesse Custer, the main character from the TV show, who comes with an alternate hand and beer bottle. And on the right is his vampire friend, Cassidy, who also comes with a booze bottle and a book. Here's the last of the action figures on display in this room. We'll just call them miscellaneous. Here's one from Assassin's Creed. It's a Harlequin. Just a cool figure. I liked it. I wanted it for my collection when I saw it. And there's a G.I. Joe two-pack of Snow Job and the Arctic Bat. Another G.I. Joe figure here of a character called Bombardier. This was a Collector's Club subscription exclusive figure. Here's a figure of Peter Venkman, played by Bill Murray in the film Ghostbusters. Uh, you can see also he comes packaged with Slimer. And this was from a series of Ghostbusters figures that were offered through Maddie Collector, uh, the Mattel Collector's Club Online. I don't know a whole lot about this figure, to be quite honest. Uh, it came to me from my collection from a local collector that I used to trade figures with many years ago by the name of Mo, different from the Mo in Arizona. <laughs> and again, I don't know too much about it other than it's a finely sculpted female, as you can see there. And it comes from a series called Fathom by Michael Turner. And the figure is made by the Biff Pang Pow Company, the same company that made the Big Lebowski figures. Here is a figure of Master Chief from Halo, three and three quarters inch size. It's made by a company called Tataku. And as you can see by the sticker there is a GameStop exclusive. Uh, my former boss, Tony, actually got this, uh, gave me this figure as a Christmas gift. I was in the store one day just kind of admiring the figure on the peg, checking it out. And next thing I know, it's Christmas time and Tony presents me with this figure as a gift, which I just thought was very cool of him. Here is a little more GameStop generosity in the form of uh, promotional giveaway items. It's a couple keychains. Uh, these were given away, again, as promotional items for uh, customers who pre-ordered the game. There's Spyro keychain, and there's one from Crash Bandicoot. And over here is one from Metroid. Metroid. 